Hello and good day. My name is Jamie Young, TP055272. Currently my second semester of my first year in computer engineering. Intake code APU1F2006CE. If you take a look inside this folder, you can see four different C files. We have the main C file and four uh, separate, no, this is an extra, sorry. And four different uh, header files. So inside our first, we can take a look inside. In our first uh, C file, we have our our main um, program and also a menu function. So inside our first header file, we can see that we have the employee telephone search function, and that is the only thing inside. Inside our second um, header file, we have the uh, new employee assignment function, and that's all that's in there as well. And in the third uh, header file, we have the update employee number function. And in the final one, we have the employee records function. So inside each header file, we have one function. So let's run the program one time. And look, I look at the functions. All right. All right. So as you can see that in the folder, there are no existing text files, meaning this is the first time we're running the program. So as you can see, if we press, uh, if we decide to do anything like search, update, or employee records, it won't let us do that, as this is the first time we're running the program. And it'll, instead, it will tell us to, no database has been created, please go to new employee assignment, which is the second one, so let's just go ahead and do that. So once we're here, we can go ahead and type in a name. So if we go something over, Something over 15. The system is going to tell us that um, the maximum is 15 and it's going to ask us for another input. So if we just go ahead and put in Jamie Young, yep, that's going to work there. And and then it's going to move on to TPI, TP number. So TP, which is the employee ID. If we put something that's longer, it's not going to work. If we put something that's, sh that's shorter, it's not going to work either. So we're going to have to put something that's exactly the right length. And therefore, we can move on to the uh, phone number. Same with phone number, if we put something shorter, it's not going to work. We're gonna have to put something that's exactly the right thing. Nine four four. Before it moves on to the next department, and in the departments, we can if we choose something out of bounds like eight or some random number letters, it's not gonna work. It's gonna tell us please select one to four only. So let's just go ahead and do one of those. Look, there we go. Employee employee details are completed, and inside the the folder, you can see that we actually have a new uh, text file. Therefore, we know that um the assignment actually has been done. So now that the assignment has been done we can go ahead and go for option one we can search for a telephone number and we can either search using name or id so let's just go ahead and try using id tp055272 and it'll print out the phone number that i've just keyed in so if we just verify that 3288 the one i keyed in just now was uh, 3288 as well let's go for our third option so let's go for option number three we can uh, update that phone, uh, phone number since we've already used uh, id just now to search let's just try using my name instead so jamie young Yep, and we can key in a new phone number. And it's been updated successfully, right? Just to, just to prove that we can go to employee records for the fourth one, right? We can go to the fourth, op fourth option, and then we can pick from one to five. If we put something like eight, that's not gonna work out of bounds. We can ask you to pick from one to five. If I put some random letters, that's not gonna work either. So let's just go ahead and pick number three, which is the, the one I've input earlier. And you can see that you print out the name, the TP and as well my my phone number and once we are done with oh let's say if we go to number one and we search something that doesn't exist let's use my name and, and I type um, yep it's gonna tell me that Mary thinks telephone cannot be found because there's no such entry yet and if I go to number number three and I try to update for ID but the uh, with a uh, non-existing TP so just sorry yep it's gonna tell me employee is unable to be found right because this the employee does not exist if I go to register new employee if I try to type in my name my own name please don't tell me that this entry already exists and bring us right back to the menu so that's some of the validation inside this program and we can key anything else just to exit the program and there we go so now let's go into our actual um, C into our C files so here inside our, our main block, all it does is um, 
we have a character, uh, we have a, va loop, var a loop, uh, loop variable. We, um, this is to use um, to make sure that our menu function runs on until the um, until the user decides to exit. So it does it for the first time because loop has not been um, initialized with any value. So it uses the do while command. So it runs it first, and and the loop will be assigned to whatever value that uh, menu decides to return. So if you go over to menu, you can see that this one is in, uh, this function has the type character, so it will return the character. So it will take the user input, here it scan the user input, and if it's one, it will call the, um, the employee telephone search function, if it's two, the assign new employee function, and if it's three, the update telephone number, and if it's four, it will do employee records, right? And if it's none of those, it will return. It will return the choice. And if it's let's say six or uh, an alphabet, it will not fulfill these um, conditions, and it will return zero, and the program will exit. Under employee search, we can see here, un uh, in every program, it will actually check whether or not the file exists first. If if it doesn't exist, it will tell you to go for employee assignment and the program essentially ends over there and it returns zero. Right? If it does exist, only then will it move on. Right? So moving uh how how it searches for the employee is that first it'll take in the employee first it'll ask the the user whether or not they want to use um the search by name or search by ID. If they input one and they want to search by name, this one this um command here make sure we only scan 15 characters. We're using scanf and we're making sure that it only scans 15 into the 15 uh, characters into the array because the array size is 16. Right? And then what we do, what we do here is to make sure that um, if it's longer than 15, it's going to loop and ask again to make sure that ask is going to scan again to make sure that the user only keys in something that is 16 less this. And how it makes sure and how it detects whether or not it's um, longer than 15 is that because we initialize the array to be six, size 16, we can check the f the 16th element in the array, so that's um, employee name 15. If it is not empty, if it's not a if it's not empty, it's going to repeat and ask request that the user key in something that's only 15 characters or below. And if the user keys in something that's shorter, because it's going to, let's say they key in something that's only five characters long, the fifth sixth character is going to be a slash n. And we don't want that for the comparison for the purpose of comparison. So we're gonna change that slash n if it is to a slash zero instead. So to make sure so that signifies that is the end of the array. This is gonna be required for our comparing purposes later. Alright. So here um while file not uh, at the end of file handler, right? Th what this does is um it scans the file using um an exclamation mark as a delimiter. So it'll scan the first value inside the folder inside the text file and assign it to file employee name. So now we have two different variables and what we do is we compare each and every character inside the array, so the one that the user inputs and the one we got from the file. As long as there's a difference, it will break, but if not, it will continue to check. Right? Once it breaks from this loop, it will, it will use here and scan to the next, it will move the pointer to the next line before it continues to uh, get a second uh, second employee name for the text file to compare with the one that the user input, right? So once we found that um, every character is the same, meaning that um, we found we found the name, we will let check equals to one, right? So once we're out of the loop, once we're done checking every name, if check equals to one, that means we found it, right? And then once we found that name, we can move our our file pointer to the asterisk over here. And then we can scan until a hash key, which is what will give us the employee phone number. And from that, we can print the employee phone number. If check doesn't equal to one, we can it will know that there is no employee found, and we can print that to the user. Choice two does the exact same thing, but instead of checking for employee name, it goes to the file and checks for the employee ID instead. So it will, again, it will uh, here it will compare every character of the employee array to every character inside the employee array that's gotten from the text file to see if it's the same. If it's not the same, it'll break and check the next name. Under new employee assignment, it 
it does something very similar in the beginning. So it will take in the employee name, making sure it's not more than 15 characters with the same method I've mentioned earlier. And then it'll check to make sure to see whether or not this name already exists. So this is very similar to how the they scan for the name. Uh, they, they no, they check whether or not the name um, how they search for the name. So what it does is it goes through every line in the in the file to to compare character by character of the of the employee name and the f file employee name. And if it and if it already exists, the check will equals to be one. Then it will tell the user, nope, this already exists. You can't key this in anymore because we're trying to create something new here. So only if that only if it detects that um, that name doesn't exist, then it will go ahead and take in the employee TP number. The way it takes in the TP number is very similar to how it takes in the name, but instead of 16 characters, now we use uh, 8 to make sure that the user stays in the required amount. And if it's less, it will here. If it checks that it's less than 8, or if it's more than 8, it will loop and make sure and ask the user to key in a new one until the desired length is achieved. Same for the employee phone number. Employee phone number, it will make sure to check that it's 10 digits. If it's less or if it's more, it's going to loop back here. We, you can see here this loop. If it's less or more, it's going to loop back and, and ask for a new value again. Right. And after we are we have assigned the name, we have gotten the name TP and phone number, we can let the user pick from one to four, which is a department. And if they pick something that's less than zero or more than four, basically not, not within our range, it's going to loop back and ask the user for a new choice. So you can't key in any kind of character, any kind of uh, um, string or integer, or integer that's not z uh, one to four. Yep. And once it's gotten all the values, so the, it's got the name, it's got the ID, it's got the phone number, and it's got the department, it's going to print that to, it's going to append that to the, to the, to the text file. So it's going to add at the last line of the text file. And it's using, and it's the way we arrange it in text file is that we're using an exclamation mark to separate the name, and then we're using a, a asterisk to separate the ID, a hash key to separate the phone number, and a slash n, which is a new line, to separate the department, which is stored in an integer file. And it, it's going to tell us that, there we go, it's complete, saves the file, and returns to zero. For update employee number, this is like the longest function that we have. And what it does is, uh, as you can see here, um, again, it checks whether or not a file is created. If not, it's going to ask the user to go to the employee assignment and exit this function. If it already exists, it's going to create a new temporary folder called uh, del.txt. So it's short for delete, because we are not going to need this after. So what it's going to do is that, again, it's going to ask whether or not we want to use name or ID. Uh, or back to menu. So basically, if it's not, uh, if once it's uh, one or if it's not one or two, it's going to end the program, and then we're going to loop back into the main menu here. But let's say we do select one, which is uh, using name. It's going to use the same method again as explained previously to make sure that the name is not more than fifteen, and then it's going to check the file. Again, with the same method, comparing character to character. But the difference is that once here, once it finds the, so so here when it's scanning the name scanning every line for a new employee name, it straight away prints it into the temporary file, so the Dell TXT that was created earlier. And it prints it with a delimiter of, uh, it prints it and adds a delimiter, which is the same as the one it it, re it read in the previous file. Because when we're using S S, we are ignoring this star percent, uh, this asterisk C, meaning that we're ignoring, we're scanning until this exclamation mark, but we're not putting this exclamation mark into file employee name. So that's why when we print it into the new folder, we're going to have to uh, print that manually ourselves, right? So everything goes over. But once it finds the correct name, it's going to to it's going to break, right? So it's it's no longer printing the old stuff from tel into del, right? And instead, we're going to take a new phone number from the user because that's what we're trying to we're change we're changing phone numbers, right? But if it and then and then we're going to use the same method again to make sure that the user keys in something that is uh, not less than ten and not more than ten and only exactly ten digits. Right, so because the file pointer is now currently at the employee phone number, we can, we can, we can, f scan f our file hand. Uh, what we do here is we scan our file handler until the star, which is the TP number, and we print that over, and we we, sc and we print over oh here, we scan until the pers um. Oh, here we go. 
we scan the file the old for the old one, the old phone number, right? Because we the point is uh, when we when we exit the loop, with the file pointer is stuck at the employee ID. We can show you this in the in the text file later. And instead of bringing over the old phone number, we're bringing in the new phone number that the employee has keyed in over here, right? And after that, we're just printing over everything. After after we print in the new phone number, we can go ahead and print in everything else from the old file. Yep, and once that's done, we can show we can tell the user that it's been updated successfully, and otherwise we can we can tell them that employee has not been found. And in the case where employee has not been found, because it never breaks the initial loop, everything from the old file will actually be printed over to the new file. The same process is repeated for uh, option two, which is if the user chooses to use employee ID. Everything is exactly the same, but instead of searching for employee name, we're searching for employee ID. Yep, and once we're done with that, we're gonna have two files, the original tel text file tell that it's not been changed, and then the, the new delete file, which has the new phone number, the updated phone number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the original one and rename del.txt to tell.txt. So in the end, we still have one final tell.txt file and end of function return. For employee list, here we go. We have, um, for employee list, this is one of the most simpler functions. So what it does is that it, it takes the user input one to uh, either one to four. If it's five, it's gonna exit the program exit the function, sorry, and go back to the main menu. If it's uh, one to four, if it's one, we're gonna set department, the the array to school of foundation. If it's two, we'll set it to uh, school of business. If it's three, school of engineering. If it's four, it supports that. This is so that when we print it later, it will print a different uh, contents of department depending on what the user has already selected, right? And and how it and, and how it scans for the, the, the user's name here is that we'll, we'll go over here. Right. So how it how it lists out the the employee details according to department is that after we selected the department and it scans each line of the of the text file, if the department that the user selects is equal to the department that has been stored inside the text file, it goes ahead and it prints out everything that it has scanned in that line, right in that one line. And then it moves on to the next line of the text file and it checks the department again. If that line department is not the same, it moves on to the next line. It doesn't print. If it does, it prints again. So it's going to print everything under the same department uh, of that file before exiting the file. And if there, and we use a count here to, to keep track of how many times we've actually encountered the correct department. If once we're out of the loop and there's nothing, it's going to inform us that nope, there are no employees currently under this department and close file under and return. So that's the explanation of all the source code. Let's just go ahead and try to run it so you can see what the text file that it creates looks like. So we just move it over here a bit. So currently in our text file, we have only one value, which is the one we've created just now. So you can see that the name is the first one and it's separated by the exclamation mark, which is what the computer uses to, to know where one variable starts and the other one begins. The TP num ID number is separated by an asterisk and the phone numbers are separated by a hash key and the department is noted in integers from one to four and then a new line here, as you can see, there's a new line. So let's just go ahead and run the program and see what happens. When we press F9, oh, when we build and run, yep. So if we if we go ahead and go to new employee assignment and we go type a new one, and we exit the program, and we go and look at our text file here, you can see that a new entry has been made in exactly the same format as before. Now if we go ahead and run the program again, and here we decide to update the employee phone number. We just go ahead and go search by name and we update. And the new phone number will be 012. And successfully, let's just exit the program again. If you go look, look at the text file once again, you can see that we can see that here a new phone number has been registered and that's how it changes in the text file nothing else but the required folder changes now if we go in here and run it again you'll see that oops sorry if we run again you see that when we use option one to search um, the same the, the phone number comes out, the new updated one. 
if we go ahead and list number three in the for employee records and we list the and we list school of engineering, we select number three. It's going to print out both my name, my ID, my phone number, and also hanging from because she's also been registered under School of Engineering Department. Okay, let's just exit the program, and you can see that um, searching and updating doesn't change the files in any way. Yep. So that's all for my pre program presentation, and um, thank you.